Sponsoring today's video, we have GBG Mall. Now with their new Black Friday promotion, where you can use my SKG discount code and get 30% off, making your Windows 10 Pro only $13. After getting the key, you'll have it in your profile, and all you need to do is go to your Windows settings, and BAM! You have an activated system. Come on, baby! Hello guys, it's Shinkin Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and I'm really happy to bring you this video today. He's telling the truth. So today's video is a remake of a previous video that I had, well, like, like a mix of two previous videos that I had of the X11 versus the X12 and the X11 slash 12 versus Vulcan. So basically this video is a mix of those two, but with newer games like for example Ashes of the Singularity, PUBG, a Fortnite, so more games included. Some games are only the X11 versus the X12, and others are the X11 or 12 versus Vulcan. And this because the X11, 12 or Vulcan isn't a thing that you can actually download to your computer and use in all games that you want. That's not how it works. The developer needs to support it in a particular game. And nowadays games already bring one of the two APIs, so basically they already bring the X11 Oh, or they bring Vulkan. So they basically do not bring multi-API games, okay? The multi-API games that we see nowadays are basically the ones that came with one API and then were updated to a newer one. For example, Rainbow Six Siege that came with the X11 and then was updated to Vulkan, Ghost Recon Break Breakpoint the same, Fortnite, PUBG and so on. This all to say that I'm not testing all games with the X11 versus the X12 versus Vulkan, not because I don't want to, it's because I can't, okay? Lies! I'm just joking, he's telling the truth. Again. I would love to do it, but games nowadays aren't just multi-API. And well, let's not make this even longer. Basically, we'll have a small introduction of what is an API and how it works, basically how the X11, 12 and Vulkan work, and what differences they have in between each other, okay? If you already... <laughs> If you already know this part, just skip to the benchmarks because there are timestamps in the description, okay? And for the ones who don't, let's go to the explanation. DirectX is a collection of application programming interfaces, the so-called APIs. They serve to handle tasks related to multimedia, especially game and video programming. An API is basically what tells the hardware what and how to work with the software meaning that the closer the API is to the metal, the more efficient it will be, since the closer it is, the lower the software overhead will be. For example, one of the perks of using low-level APIs was the number of draw calls available compared to the X11 and OpenGL, which is monstrously higher, allowing a huge performance improvement in some scenarios and a way more sophisticated AI in others, this without losing performance. Ideally, of course. The X12 and Vulcan aren't new per se, they've actually been in the market for quite some time and they are both low-level APIs that are based on AMD's Mantle, that you can still see in Battlefield 4. They're intended to offer a way better CPU workload distribution across multiple cores with a more balanced CPU slash GPU usage, ideally resulting in better performance. The X12 is an evolution of the X11, as the name suggests, with several improvements across the board like multi-GPU support, where developers could program the application to use several GPUs independently of the Crossfire or SLI support, even being able to technically use two GPUs from different vendors at the same time. Thing that we've never seen and hardly will. As for Vulkan, it is an evolution of OpenGL, and as I said before, its code is based and built upon AMD's Mantle, which was donated to Cronus in order to later have a standardized low-level API in the gaming industry. Gladly for all of us, things did go well. One thing that Microsoft can't compete with is the fact that Vulkan can be used in Linux like OpenGL was, natively. This means that a game built with Vulkan can natively run on Linux without any kind of emulators, opening doors for Linux's gaming market, also thanks to Valve and Proton. 
The X12 was announced by Microsoft in 2014, while Vulkan was announced in 2015 at the Game Developers Conference. Developers are finally moving to the low-level APIs and realizing the perks of using Vulkan and the X12. And thankfully, most recent AAA games are already using one or both of them, some from the base up and others with later updates. So let's see how recently launched APIs like the X12 and Vulkan compare with the old and well-known DX11. This because it isn't just a matter of using API X or Y, but most importantly, how developers take advantage of them. Today's first game is Ashes of the Singularity Escalation. If you know this game, you know how intensive its AI can be. And since we have lots of draw calls, the API will make a lot of difference, since the X12 can make millions of draw calls more than the X11 in the same exact time frame. At 1080p, we have virtually the same 1% lows with the X12 as we have averages with the X11. And that is just crazy for an API change. Overall, the performance increase is huge, getting smaller as the resolution goes up. Also, this game features Vulkan as well, but while using it, I couldn't use full screen mode and the benchmark would show me a black screen with sound in the background. That is why you don't see the Vulkan results here as well. Now with Fortnite using replay feature and ultra settings. Interestingly enough, last time I tested Fortnite APIs, around a year ago, the X11 was still performing better than the X12, and now it's the opposite. This shows how important the developer's implementation is. In CPU bound scenarios like 1080p1 here, the difference is big, and the more CPU bound the scene is, the bigger the gains will be. At 1080p we got a massive boost of 44 average FPS and most importantly around 50 FPS in the 1% lows, increasing a lot the gameplay smoothness. At 1440p and 4K the performance difference isn't much since we get into a GPU bottleneck. You can also check the side by side comparison once again and watch the differences in between GPU usage and power draw for both APIs and you'll see how much the X12 is able to take advantage of the GPU in comparison to the X11. Now with PUBG using the replay feature and ultra settings. Remember where I told you about the importance of the API's implementation? That's because you'll have something like this when the developers fail to do it properly. As you can see, the results are a complete letdown, with a decrease of 46 average FPS at 1080p, 33 at 1440p and 14 at 4K. And let me tell you that 14 FPS at 4K is a lot. Also, if you check the side-by-side -side comparison, you know that the X12 not only performs worse, but also has higher GPU usage and power draw. Making me think about what the hell went wrong in the optimization department. Who knows? Next title is Battlefield 5 in the Nordlis mission. 
single player was tested instead of multiplayer in order to get the most accurate results possible. In this case we also get a jump in performance by using the X12 and although it isn't much in terms of average FPS, it is quite substantial in terms of 1% lows, which will control the gameplay smoothness. One thing though is that when using the X12 you'll have some stutters while the system is loading all assets, but after that you'll have a butter smooth experience. With the X11 you have a bit lower FPS, but you also don't have any problems with stutters. So, if you want to use the X12 here, you shall have the game installed on an SSD and at least 16GB to avoid those same stutters. Now with the last game of the X11 versus the X12, Civilization 6, using high settings in the GPU benchmark. This is another CPU driven title which needs a lot of draw calls due to the immensity of AI working in the screen. We can see that in both scenarios the little Ryzen 5 3600 is still bottlenecking hard, but even with that happening, the X12 was able to bring us a huge performance boost, meaning that the X12 is able to bring way more FPS even in a bottlenecking scenario boosting the average FPS by 50 and making the 1% lows being higher than the averages with the X11, which is quite crazy. Overall, there's no reason at all to use the X11. Ghost Recon Breakpoint has to be one of the most crippled titles in terms of performance that I've ever seen. When it came out with the X11 only, I was very disappointed to see how badly optimized it was, but gladly, a Vulcan update was released. With Vulcan we got a massive performance increase in all resolutions and scenarios, and while with the X11 was a shit fast here, Vulcan actually delivered and made the game playable. Even though the Ryzen 5 3600 is still bottlenecking a bit, mostly at 1080p, the difference is day and night, and shows how superior Vulcan is compared to the X11. Now with our beloved Red Dead Redemption 2, one of the best games I've ever played. Take 2 can suck a donkey's dick with GTA Trilogy though. In here we have not the X11 vs Vulcan, but instead the X12 vs Vulcan, and since they are both low level APIs, it is expected that the difference in between them is smaller, and it is in the minimums that the difference is, with Vulcan pushing over 4 times the value of the X12, and I repeat, four times, meaning that with Vulcan the game will have less stutters and a way smoother experience. Getting closer to the final line we have Rainbow Six Siege, an older game that also got updated to Vulcan, and of course another major jump in terms of performance. At 1080p we went from 330 to 368 average FPS, but once again, most importantly, the 1% lows, where we went from 193.6 to 256 FPS, meaning that we had an exceptional boost of 63 FPS, being it even higher at 1440p. And even at 4K, the difference can be noticed by users with high refresh rate monitors, which is very nice. I need no skin.
The last game tested is Dota 2, one of the few games like Ashes of Singularity that has three APIs, in this case OpenGL, DX11 and Vulkan. I have already tested this before and unlike Fortnite, it seems that no optimizations were made and all the differences you see in terms of performance can be considered inside the margin of error since this is an in-lane gameplay and things are always slightly different. The reason for us to not see any real-world improvements with Vulkan is mostly tied to the game's engine, which is very old and limited. It's like having a really old CPU and being in a CPU limited scenario, it won't matter if you have an RX 6900 XT or an RX 9452000 XT, it won't matter, since that's not the limiting factor. But well, let's go to the conclusion. So conclusion guys, basically as you saw, the newer APIs like the X12 and Vulkan are way better than the X11. Even when they are poorly implemented, they generally are better than the older ones. They can make way more draw calls and they are closer to the metal, so they basically don't have to pass through so many software layers, okay? They can just go there and uh, talk directly to the hardware or at least have less layers of software in uh, before, before being able to talk with the hardware, let's say that. So, they are really closer to the metal and that facilitates lots of things, uh, even in terms of developing, okay? So if the developer does put some effort into optimizing the X12 or Vulcan, they will be way better than the X11, okay? But like I said before, it is up to the developers to actually optimize that same API. Okay, and in some cases that we saw, like for example, PUBG, the X12, okay, it is, it is still in beta, I think, but the X12 is still worse than the X11. And to bring more performance with the X12, they actually need to optimize the, X, the X12 at least as much as they did with the X11. If they don't, if they do a poor optimization of the X12, it will bring less performance. And that's what's happening with PUBG, as we see the X12 is worse than the X11. As for Battlefield, I must say that um, before the game loads all the assets, the X12 has some stutters, while the X11 is almost, almost all the times butter smooth, okay? It's a trade. If you want smoothness all over, go the X11. If you want more performance with a bit stuttering at the beginning, go the X12. This in Battlefield 5. But generally, just pick Vulcan or the X12 over the X11 because it is newer, it has more things like, for example, ray tracing, uh, like the LSS, there are some things that just don't work with the X11, and in most scenarios, if well optimized, is faster. So, now you know it. So guys, thanks a lot for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video, and well, see you in the next video, guys which will most likely be the Adrenaline 21.11.3 driver review, okay? Let's see if we have some more, uh, a bit more juice in Forza Horizon 5, if we have more performance or not, okay? Then we'll have 25 games on the RX 6600 non-X, uh, non-XT, I mean, and we'll have some more videos, some more interesting ones, okay? Like the 12600K that it is, it is almost tested, okay? So it is going into the third run. So stock, overclock, and now overclock with higher RAM frequency, okay? It will come soon. I had some issues, but it will come soon. See you in the next video, guys. Okay, I'm asleep.